importing into Evernote. That's what we're talking about today. Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. Evernote's introduced many enhancements over the last year. Some you can't help but notice. You're going to come across them just in your daily use. Possibly you wonder if they were always there and if somehow you just missed them. But today I'm going to show you one that you probably would not find on your own. You know, we don't often go into our settings. If things are working, there's no reason to do so. And if there's a change we want to make, we go in, make the change, and come right back out. That's why what I'm going to show you today is so easy to miss. There's always been a relationship between Microsoft Office and Evernote. For example, you could drag a Word document into an Evernote note, and it would appear as an attachment that we could open and edit inside Evernote and save it. But now we can import. The text appears in the body of the note, not as an attachment. So we can do anything with it that we could do with any other Evernote text. Let me show you how. In Evernote, click on your picture in the upper left-hand corner and choose Settings. Now click on Import. At this point, you'll see the new thing. You see the platforms from which you can import. Apple Notes, Google Docs, OneNote, Notion, and Word. Click on any of those selections and you'll see the directions for how to handle imports from that platform. So let's look at importing from Word. We click the Word document and drag it into the box. A new note appears in Evernote with the text of the Word document. You can drag more than one document at a time into that box and each document is imported as a new note. I also tried Word documents formatted with headers, and when I imported them, the formatting that was in Word held in Evernote. Now, I'm not sure how many documents can be imported at one time. If I get a definitive answer, though, I'll add it in the comments. Now, suppose you're using another platform from which to convert. Well, in the Import Content window, click on an icon and read the instructions. For Google Docs, first you'll download the document as Word and then import the Word document, just like we just discussed. With Apple Notes or OneNote, you're going to print to PDF and then drag the PDF into the box to import. Now, I don't know if later that's going to be different and what you'll have is editable text, but at least right now, what you have is the PDF. From Notion, you'll export as HTML and import the resulting zip file. Now, with any of those, you now have your information in Evernote. You can use any tags that you want to. Now, if you've been using Word or Google Drive for a long time, you may have stored information there because you just had no other digital place to put it. I think about the difference between digital notes and digital documents this way. If this was 1975, would the thing in front of you be something better put on uh, index cards or typed up on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper on a typewriter? Well, if your answer's index cards, then what you're looking at are notes. You can organize and reorganize those index cards in any number of ways. You can jot a, a subject in a corner of the card and jot more than one subject if appropriate. And you, if you would have hauled out a typewriter, well, then you've got a document. In the 1980s and 1990s, everything, though, had to be a digital document if it was going to be digital at all. But with Evernote, with the advent of Evernote, a whole different story. So, for example, maybe you've been keeping recipes digitally and you've been doing it in Word because you've been doing it for a long time and that was just the best tool available when you started that. Maybe you have a folder 
called recipes and then subfolders for different types of dishes and folders with inside those folders. But if you do it that way, a recipe can only be in one place at a time. But you might want to see all salads or all desserts. You might want to see all recipes good for a particular holiday or recipes that are a favorite of this family member or that one. You might want to pull together all of the recipes that are easy to make versus more labor intensive because uh, maybe you're teaching sort of a beginning cooking class or you're working with another family member on getting started and you want to be able to put your hands on some easy recipes. So with, with Evernote, you have a notebook for your recipes and then you can use tags for all of the other things that I was talking about. So you could easily find a dessert that's a favorite of Tommy that's easy to make and appropriate for a hot summer day just because of the way you've tagged that note and a simple search gives you what you're looking for. Now, you probably have plenty of digital documents that if you had it to do all over again, you would have made them digital notes. And now you can do it all over again. And it's easy to do, especially if we're talking about Microsoft Word to Evernote. So take a look at your digital documents and see which ones need a new home in Evernote. I have a question for you. What's an issue you are having with organization or time management, whether it's paper or digital? Let me know in the comments, either on the blog post or on the YouTube channel, and you might inspire a future episode. And if you enjoyed this episode, there's plenty more over on frankbuck.org. Join the email list for two free gifts so that you never miss a thing. Thanks for stopping by. This has been Frank Buck, helping you get organized and make it look easy.